Welcome back. Sarah Schreiner joining us from Exposure Kamloops. And uh, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks. Uh, of course, with Christmas coming up, people are going to be taking tons of pictures. You want to take good pictures. And one of the key important elements to a good picture is light. Mm -hmm. So we're going to today talk about ways to use light outside of your camera. So everything we've been talking about uh, so far has been things that you can do um, that don't require a lot of technical knowledge. Um, so the most obvious one is natural light. Um, so we'll start uh, with some of the photos. So uh, if you look at this picture here of Kibwe and Crystal and their daughter Brooklyn, you're going to notice that the light is coming from the side of Crystal. I've made sure that the person who is tallest is furthest away from the light. The person who is smallest is closest to the light. Um, and they're slightly staggered. So Crystal is sitting slightly back from Kibwe to make sure that as the light is falling, it's hitting all of their faces and they're nice. not throwing shadows across each right. other. So that would be the first one. This is backlighting. Backlighting can be a lot of fun to work with. It can be a little bit tricky. You're going to notice that she is in a completely open field. Uh, the light is coming from behind her. You can tell by the shadow that's falling in front of her. So she's going to be a little bit shadowed in the front, but working with that kind of light can produce really beautiful, beautiful results. Don't wear a sheer dress. Don't wear a sheer dress. This photo, the child is turning her face into the light. So this was done with studio light, but it's not any different if you're using a window light. So if you've got the window light to one side, it creates beautiful, beautiful contrast. You can, if your window light is too strong, don't be afraid to put up a sheer curtain mm. and diffuse it. Nice. This is an example of putting two subjects. We don't want to ever create shadows from one subject to the other. Mm -hmm. Typically, most people would put the boys side by side. One would be casting a shadow on the other's face. We simply had one of the boys turn and shift past the other one's shoulders so they're not throwing the shadows on each other. Mm -hmm. That's a great picture. So this is an example of finding light in tiny places. So this is on the street and there is a big tree behind her that's diffusing the light. And I've simply moved the child until her face fell in the tiny amounts of light that are coming through. You can create the most beautiful photos that way and it's really simple to do. Mm -hmm. So light is coming off the front of the vehicle. In this photograph, I simply had the model move forward until that light fell on her face. Really simple to do, it's just watching where the light is falling in the image. Mm -hmm. Again, dark situation. I moved the bride around until she fell into the tiniest beam of light and I was able to do that. So it looks like studio lighting, but it's not. Mm -hmm. This is natural light. I simply looked at my environment, found the light, and then moved the model into it, allowing all that darkness to create a really impactful image. I think there might be one left, there we go. And then this one is window light in the bedroom. Now you're going to notice that there's a shadow on the side of her. If you don't want shadows in your photographs, move your subject back from the wall. The further away they are, the shadow's gonna fall to the ground and you're not gonna see it. How important would you say is lighting? Is it one of the top three most important elements? Because I Well, I that, that's what a photograph is. It's all it's about light. lighting. That's it what is I light. Hear. It's all, all about lighting. lighting. Um, I brought a couple of things to show you. If you don't have enough light and your images are orange, you might want to check your white balance, but it also has to do with the fact that there's not enough light in the room. Everybody hates the flash on their camera. Mm. Little trip trick. If you drink coffee, go get your coffee filter. Put it over top with a little mm. bit of scotch tape, over top of that pop-up flash, and bang, you won't hate that light nearly so much. This will, this will diffuse it and spread it out over your subject. Awesome. And you won't get that really hard light. It's okay. free. The other thing is a piece of paper, mm. cardboard. You have really even light in here, so it's really hard for me to show, but a really great way to fill in the side of the face is to find that light and use something as simple as some white paper on a cardboard mm -hmm. to fill that light in. Awesome. All things you got around the house. We have about 22 seconds. Oh, we've got about 30. Look at that. What, tell us what's going on at the uh, studio this month. Uh, this month at the studio, we have a number of classes. We're teaching Lightroom this weekend. Uh, so if you're into photography at all, that is your best uh, editing software. We're teaching a full day of Lightroom this weekend. Um, coming up on the 29th is our Polaroid show, which we are very excited about. Awesome. Um, so that's coming up on November 29th with Liam. Excellent. So if people want to sign up for those sorts of things, they can go to the website or certainly call you. Absolutely. I know that, uh, we've got your information there. Website, ExposureCamels.com. And the email, info at ExposureCamels.com. I love your tips every month, Sarah. They're awesome. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks yeah. for having me. Thanks for being here. Love your apron. Do you want to come down and make pancakes on Basics for Babies on Friday? I would love to. Okay, maybe we'll have you down.